Hi everybody, it's John back with another model in box review. This is um, this is an aircraft that I actually have a bit of a soft spot for. It's not a particularly capable ground attack aircraft, but it did form the basis of the Soviet and Eastern Bloc's training regime for um, inertial jet conversion and trainer um, projects and also for ground attack in much the same way that the um, the fallen Nat performed and, they, and now of course the Hawk performs for the RAF. The aircraft of course is an Aero L29 Delphin. Um, it's actually quite a, a rudimentary design very early and very crude in design technique and everything and the way the aircraft is put together but it does it does run on a British engine in the guise of the Bristol Sidley Viper turbojet, which was the same engine that can be found in the Jet Provost T Mark III um, and later variants of the Jet Provost as well. But I think it was the same version of the Viper that ran in the Jet Provost T Mark III that powered the uh, the L29. This is actually an L29, which is on the air show circuit in the European um, air shows. Uh, it's a Soviet. It's in Soviet um, trainer markings. Um, the aircraft was utilised by the Soviet Union for quite a number of years, and virtually every Eastern Bloc state air force also ran the L29 in their program. Um, the kit we're actually doing an inbox review on today is the Kosovo Dodi Prostijo, often called KP models. Uh, 172nd scale model of the Aero L29 Delphin and the original boxing was actually released in this style of box. Um, KP released this kit in 1970. You can see the original flag logo of uh, Kova, Kova Savodi Prostijov um, which was marketed on the box with this style of box artwork. This box artwork only lasted one edition um, and the, the box was very quickly taken off the market and replaced with their new style boxing in 1971, which looked like this. They were much more um, simplified in terms of the box lid, with very few in the way of company logos. Everything The company logos usually fell on the sides of the kit, um, which was interesting. And I'll show you the box in a minute, because the box is quite interesting. It's also very small. Um, Anyway, that's 1971. The boxing then went to 1990, where again KP models changed their boxing, um, if you like, their marketing uh, layouts for the boxes, where they went to this style of bluey grey sort of borders on the left hand side, very similar to the idea that Hasegawa released now, um, where their armour kits and a lot of their aircraft kits are released in boxing similar style to this and KP actually had it before Hasegawa in 1990. Now then, whoops, I think it's just dropped a page. I don't know why but it has. I think it's just dropped a page. There is actually, um, hang on two seconds, let me just, let me just fire something up for you. 1993 should not have come up straight away. There we go, that's the one I want. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, this particular kit was released in 1992. And it's by a company called Aero Team. And I think Aero Team were actually backed by KP Models. They're part of the KP Models group. And it's exactly the same kit inside, if a different colour plastic. Um, and the, the box, it wasn't actually a box. It was more of an early Airfix style Series 1 bag kit where you had a card um, stapled to a bag containing all the parts and the decals and the instruction leaflets formed part of the uh, the header here where the image of the L29 is on the top. It says Limited Series 1000. I think they only built 1,000 of these models, um, which is a bit of a shame really because I think it's a quite a good way of marketing very cheap kits. And this kit is a very cheap kit. It, you can usually get it for next to nothing. 1993. Uh, a company called Mastercraft, which were backed by Copro at the time. Now, I don't know whether Copro actually put money into Mastercraft before they went their own ways, but Mastercraft very quickly became another company, which sounds very similar, and you'll see that in a minute. But 1993, um, 
Mastercraft released the kit with this type of box artwork and I quite like this type of box artwork. It looks very good. It's a shame I haven't got this variant as a decal option in the, in the kit because I think it would be quite nice. 1993 went through to 2003 where Copro again released this kit as a Copro kit. Um, Aero L29 Delphin again with the same artwork. Um, it's a bit more rougher, rougher graphics on the boxing. Um, but that was released 10 years later in 2003 by Copro. And then in 2007, there's a, another Copro injected uh, kits marketing where a company called Copro Air Moulds. Now, I'm not sure whether Air Moulds was something to do with another country's agent and Copro again just uh, fielded this kit. But it is the original KP model in the in the boxing um which is quite interesting because that model is actually ancient. It's it's nearly 40 years old here when it's been released by Copro Air Moulds. Then in 2010, KP Models came back on the scene with another new style of box. This box appeared to be like um, a, a metal L-shaped frame for a picture frame, if you like. But they actually used the same artwork that Copro had utilised on their boxings. Which is why I think KP models might be something to do with Copro, but a different agent for a different part of the world. Don't quote me on that, not 100% sure, but um, it does. it's very funny that it's the same artwork, but it's KP models this time instead of Copro. Now then, 2015, Mastercraft went out on their own. Um, and they started producing a lot of Copro, KP kits and other uh, companies' kits, mainly Hella, um, in sales for Mastercraft boxings. And they did quite well. Um, and as I said, this, this, this model boxing was released in 2015, but they did do quite well until the appearance... Oh, God, it's done it again. I don't know why it's doing this. Sorry about this. I think I might have an issue with my um, my mouse because my mouse keeps feeding stuff that it shouldn't do. It keeps double clicking stuff. Anyway, this company came on the scene, Mr. Craft. And Mr. Craft, you can get these boxings in the shops now and they're very, very cheap. You could probably acquire this kit for something like as little as eight, eight quid or so. Um, but these started being released on the market in about 2018. And when these came on the market... Mastercraft disappeared. Now I don't know whether Mr. Craft is Mastercraft but just renamed um, or whether Mr. Craft bought uh, Mastercraft up. I honestly don't know what the score is but the box, everything about the box just screams Mastercraft and it's the same style of box that Mastercraft brought out three years prior to this release. Anyway, that's the Master Cra uh, Mr. Craft offering from 2018. You can get this kit on the shelves nowadays, quite easily obtainable. Um, I just want to leave you an image here before we go and have a look at this kit. Um, this is an, a, it's a Czech Air Force um, Aero L29. Uh, this again is on the air show circuits. The aircraft isn't being utilised anymore as a trainer in any of the Eastern Bloc countries. Um, they've actually gone over to, I think, Western aircraft now. Um, very common to see uh, Western aircraft being utilised by these, some of these some of these Eastern Bloc countries. Just pan the camera down very quickly. I'll try and get this done as quietly as possible because I know some of you guys don't like the noise. <laughs> Sorry about that. And we'll just have a quick look at this kit. Here's the boxing. For the L29 Delphin by Kova Sabodi Prostajov. On the side you've got a nice uh, drawing image of the L29. As I said, on this boxing you've got the, the logo on the sides of the box there, 170 second scale, and obviously you can see it's a checkered Slovakian company. And then that I think tells you what the different options are inside the kit and you can get a Soviet Air Force one which I will probably be interested in doing. Quite fancy a Soviet Air Force one with the red band like I saw in the image earlier. So before we have a look at the parts I'm going to show you the instructions because the instructions are quite interesting. I'll just um, take the decals out because the decals are in one of these somewhere. 
for it. They're always in the last one, aren't they? There we go. Yeah, I haven't got... I've only got two, two different markings with this boxing. Now then, the first instruction sheet is going to be the one I'm going to go through. But it's interesting to show you what is going on with these instructions. Because this one is the German instruction, East German instructions, if you like. And they're printed in East German. The second one is this one, this one here. And this one, I think, is printed in Czech. <laughs> so you've got three different instructions here, one in German, one in Czech. The Czech and German ones are actually identical. They're just printed in different languages. But the one you get with English, the one you get in English, hasn't got the instructions. There's no instructions for the kit. It's just the written instructions and paint plans, which is quite interesting. But um, it actually tells you for drawing A and drawing B, it's a bit like going back to the days of the red stripe boxes with Airfix, where it gives you written instructions on how to put this kit together. Which is quite interesting. Drawing A, drawing B, and drawing C. Yeah, great. So that's the English one, that's the Czech one. We'll have a look at this instruction which is done in East German because then you can see exactly what, what they mean by picture A, picture B, and picture C. The kit itself, you've got some gunt there, obviously, this is in German, but in the English one, you've got the gunt in English and stats and, and information on the aircraft. Uh, his, his history of the aircraft and bits and bobs like that. Um, and on the back, you've got a paint plan. You get check markings or Ugandan Air Force markings. And this is another option that I could quite be interested in building, the Ugandan Air Force one, because it looks quite nice, doesn't it? I quite like the look of it. And then you've got drawing A, which is a parts plan. Everyone knows how much I love these parts plans. They're brilliant. They're it. Give you easy ID for parts that you can't see the numbers on the sprues. And then in drawing B, you're basically putting the airframe together. It's quite a rudimentary interior there, but look at that, Bill. You've got two pilots. Yep, and they're there. Um, and then in drawing C, these are quite exploded views, very similar to the concept of the Red Stripe Airfix kits, where you had lots, lots going on on maybe at the most three steps. And it's very similar with this kit. And there's a couple of um, little little hints here where they're showing you um, the open undercarriage position of all the doors. It's quite a complicated affair there. And then they're showing you the closed position of all the doors. And if you want the undercarriage down, you have to heat the end of the pin on the undercarriage to locate it, which means that the back wheels will probably be rotating. Which is quite nice and then you've got the stand construction which on this kit i think is transparent which is quite nice too they even show you how to paint the pilot up um i quite like the plans on this i think they're quite good i was quite impressed the decals <clears throat> the decals on this kit look they're pretty shabby to be honest with you <laughs> they look okay the backing film is pretty fine I've used KP markings before and they don't offer any issues whatsoever. There's no problems with them at all. Um, I don't really have an issue with that. But the register and the quality of the decals just isn't really up to scratch with modern kits. But these decals are from 1971. So they're probably pretty much what you can expect. Get the parts out so you can have a look at these parts in a minute. They're quite intricate. The parts are quite intricate indeed. I'm not going to have to show you all of the parts because a lot of them are sort of duplicated. I'll try and get them out so you can see them. Right. Transparency. Cockpit transparency on this kit is pretty dire. I'm going to be honest with you, there's very little in the way of a cockpit frame. There is a slight cockpit frame there, but it's not easy to see, which means it's not going to be easy to paint. 
probably might have to resort to yeah, painting it according to a photograph that's on the web. But the stand itself is actually transparent and it's not bad, is it? It's similar in construction to the Airfix stands from the 70s and early 80s. But um, I like the look of that base. That's quite nice. But the cockpit canopy, yeah, not much to write home about there. So that's not very good. Two major sprues on this kit. Again, the parts, there's not much to write home about. They're pretty rudimentary parts. Um, very, very similar to most um, limited run Soviet injected molded models. But of course, this was nearly 50 years ago. So, you know, not, it's what I would expect. Do you know what I mean? Two pilots on this kit. They're full of flash. Which I'm surprised about because these kits molds weren't very old when these were cast. Um, the small parts detail there, it's not too bad, I suppose. You know, it's, it's as I said before, it's um, pretty much run of the mill for what you get from a Soviet or an Eastern Bloc company's model kit. Um, I'll just put some of this stuff away because you don't need to see all of this stuff. You don't need to see two of those, two of those, or two of those. Right, so we've got we've got the stuff you need to see here. You don't need to see two of those either. Right, tail fin. This is a, sorry, the tail plane. The tail plane is actually cast with quite a bit of detail. There's a few rivets here and there. They might need sanding down. They're a bit heavy, but I'll be honest with you. There's a tiny bit of flash around this kit anyway, so it's probably going to need sanding down quite a bit. And cleaning up prior to assembly but the detail well, there's a couple of injector pin marks there that's not too good the detail isn't too bad quite impressed with the detail actually it looks all right the outer wing panels are actually one piece there's no wing halves on this it's just a one piece outer wing and the detail on that again it's pretty heavy set rivet detail but i'm looking at the real aircraft and it's not that different to that. <laughs> it looks pretty much the same. Again, you've got a few injection mouldings here, which will need sanding down. Yep, pretty much run of the mill. The inner wing section underside with the door wells, uh, the wheel wells rather. Again, a few injection mould marks there. So it's a bit of cleaning up to do on this kit. And that's the upper wing half. It's a shame they couldn't put all the injection moulding marks on the inside like this one has. You've got a built-in air intake there as well, which has got a bit of flash. It'll need cleaning up. But um, yeah, again, the rivet detail, it's a bit overdone, but it, you know it's not impossible to get rid of a little bit. The fuselage halves, they're both much of a muchness. Um, the aerial on the inside of that kit is not... The same as the one I'm looking at on the real aircraft. The one I'm looking at is more like a stiff whip aerial. It's like a straight 45 degree aerial at the back instead of that 90 degree angle. Um, the rivet detail on this fuselage half again is pretty heavy. Um, and I think that's going to need cleaning up. Raised panel lines and rivets see everywhere. It's a bit of a shame really. Um, the interior is non-existent. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. But, as I said before, you can get these kits dirt cheap. They, you can usually buy these kits for around about, well, under a fiver actually. I've seen them go for as little as £2 um, in this boxing. And I think they're quite collectible. They're nice little kits to collect. You know. Anyway, that's that's the the uh, the parts. I'll just give you just go now to the uh, the gump to read out and get finished the model itself is a Cobra Savodi Prostijov Aero L29 Delphin the NATO code name for this kit was uh, for this aircraft was actually Maya um, the release date was originally 1970 for KP models and the serial number believe it or not was serial number one 
The kit was released in 172nd scale and there were decals for two versions, one from the Czech Air Force and one from the Ugandan Air Force. The kit's dimensions are about 6 inches long by 6 inches span and it should sit about an inch and a half high on its undercarriage. There are 39 parts on two light grey plastic sprues and three parts on a clear plastic sprue, totaling 42 parts total. The options and costs, um, there are a number of options, but they're, they're not as many as I would have thought. I would have thought they'd have been a bit more abundant than this, but they're not. In one 144 scale, there are two options, one from Attack Hobby Kits that build an L29 that retails for between £12 and £18, and Mark 1 models build a two aircraft set of an L29 for £12 to £17, and the Mark 1 models kits are actually quite well praised by the pro builders. They quite like that one. In 72nd scale, there's a newer, very recently tooled kit from AMK Avant Guard model kits, and they build an L29 which retails for between £10 and £12. Bilek also produced a standalone kit of the L29 Delphin for £10 to £18, and the KP model's offering is about £3 to £10. The special hobby model, which um, apparently is quite nice as well, retails between £20 and £25. So it's quite pricey, that one. Now, these kits have been reboxed by other companies, um, but a lot of them, I think, have had money or been backed by the original company, either Copro or sorry, KP Models or Avant Garde. Um, but basically, Copro Air Molds build an L29, which is an old KP kit. No pricing is available on that. Mastercraft did an L29, which is a KP kit, but it was also backed by Copro. And that model re retails, I think it retailed for about 10 quid. Mr. Craft did an L29 kit, which is the old KP kit, retails for about 10 to 12 pound, as does the original Copro kit, L29, which was actually a Rebox KP model, and that retailed for 10 to 12 pounds as well. Aero Team, um, they built an L29, which was the original KP kit, no pricing is available on that, and Edward do an L29, which is an AMK Avant Garde model kit, which retails for 12 to 15 pound. The AMK Avant Garde model kit was also reboxed by a company called Vesely Lepich, who built an L29, and that retailed for no. Um, I haven't got any prices on that either. Sorry about that. In 148 scale, AMK Avant Garde model kits build an L29, and again, this kit is quite nice, but I have seen it go for as cheap as five quid, and I've also seen it sell for 59.99. Um, so. If you want to get hold of one of these, you can sometimes get them cheap, but expect to pay in excess of 30 quid for one. Planet Models also did a 48 scale L29 for 40 to 42 pound. Edward also produced the L29, which was the AMK kit uh, rebox for 12 to 30 pound. Now you can get a company who build this kit in one thirty second scale, and that's Hong Kong Models. Um, HPH is what they're actually called, but they're, they're actually called Hong Kong models, and they build an L29 which retails between 90 and 100 pound. Conclusions. Now then, <clears throat> KP models are not always the. F Sorry, KP models are not really for the faint-hearted, but this kit looks to be a simple enough build. With rivets and raised panel lines everywhere, it belies its age, but it was the only kit on the block for some 30 years. I do feel that it may still have something to offer, as I've seen this kit built up and it looks quite nice. However, the pilots look like grey-type aliens. Maybe the planet Zog is missing a couple of UFO pilots. And the kits worthy of note are the AMK Avant-Garde models in 48th and 72nd scale, and the HPH model in 132nd scale. I have looked at this kit several times and fancied a bash at it, so let's see how things work out for me. This is the inbox review for the Aero L29 Delphin from KP Models. Um, I hope this video has been of some use. If you have any questions, queries, any any comments, just put them in the comments slip and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and I hope all your modelling projects are running very smooth. Um, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you for the next one. Bye bye for now.